Okay, so today we're going to be going over the for loop. Now I've already seen the while loop, hopefully we're really comfortable with the while loop now. So what we the examples that we've been using are um we make the we make a variable, we're gonna treat it as a counting variable. In this case x is our counting. Then we're gonna make the statement. Here we're we're gonna keep on going through until the statement eventually becomes false, which it should be, or it may break out of the statement. Or we can uh, set it true and we can make a special case. If a special case just happens to happen in our program, we'll break out of the statement. But, uh, so this is the while loop here. Now I want to, so basically see this little tab here? This might be something new here. Instead of using an, an, a new line here to print these all to a new line, see these will each go to a new line here. We can just use this here and it'll just make a tab. That's all it is, is a tab. And it'll just uh, tab over and then output the new lines here. So then uh, that's it. And we can say, uh, we're counting by twos here. Notice that this is x equals x plus 2. I can also say x is plus equal to 2. That means we're going to add 2 to it in this way. This is, does the same thing. Maybe I want to uh, just add 1 to it. This will also do the same thing. We can make it whatever number we'd like. And it counts to 50. We can also use a x plus. Now, since we're using one here, we can also just use the plus plus operator as well. And it is the same thing. So the plus plus is the same thing. Only if you're going to add one to it. If you want to add like a different number to it, let's say two. Then we'd have to use the plus equals here. We can also use minus equals. If we want to subtract 2, we can use the times equals. If we want to multiply it by 2, we can use the divide equal. But we're gonna, we're just going to subtract 2. We're going to run it again and, sh and show you that it does the... We're going to add 2 and show you that it does the same thing here. Okay. So now, what I want to do, I want to show you the for loop. Now the for loop is a basically a uh, souped up while loop. It has more. It's a while loop that has more properties here. Okay, so we have. So I'm going to write the, a code that does this the same exact operation here. Okay, so all it's going to do is it's going to count by two. So first we're going to type in the keyword for here. And like the for loop here, or like the while loop, it's going to have brace. It's probably going to have braces now, just like anything else here. The for loop is going to point to just a single line, a, a single program statement, or a block of code with many program statements in here. But I'm already going to type in something here. So first, there's a few things about the for loop. We're, it's going to take three parts here. One declares a variable here. So first, let's declare a variable in here. We're gonna let's call it intx, just like we did with the other while loop here, and let's set it equal to zero. Then we put a semicolon. Now, after the semicolon, we go to the second portion of the for loop. That will be our boolean portion. We're gonna say while x is less than uh, let's say fifty. Okay, after that, we're going to put a semicolon. Now, finally, the third portion is going to be where we change our variables here. So that's going to be our counting variable, which happens to be x here. So we can say x, and let's say we have plus equals 2. So we have three portions here. Now, they're each separated by a semicolon here. So there's a for loop will always take two semicolons, and there's three spaces between the two semicolons here. So now in here we will write our code.
and it does the same exact thing. So let's look at this here. So first, we're going to use this initialized variable here. Now, uh, this is good because that way we don't have to make a variable up here just to count something here. When we have larger programs here, we don't want to make a, a variable up here just to count a, a certain operation. We can just make this variable x here specifically for this loop. And that all it is, its only job is to, to count stuff here. Now we can say, we can make this whatever we'd like. We can make it equal to 3 or equal to 2 every time after it executes. But that's not going to help us. Because the for loop was designed for this to be a counting variable here. But still, you can you can still use it however you would like. I mean, these are... We're talking about what you can and can't do and what you should and shouldn't do. So you can still do this here. Should you do it? Uh, it wasn't designed that way. But you can do it. And maybe there might be a case where you can say x equals 3 or maybe x equals some other constant. Maybe x equal, would equal y if we had declared y somewhere else up here. But for this, for this example here, I want to count by 2. I can even count by 3. So uh, that's, the, uh, that's our uh, introduction to the while loop here. Or the, uh, I'm sorry, the for loop. So the while loop is a uh, souped up for loop, and we can use the for loop with it in place of a while loop any day. So let's say I already have a, uh, yeah, a variable up here. Say we have int x and it's equal to zero here. Now uh, let me get rid of this here. If we already have a variable here as x here, we don't need to be using this variable here. We don't. Ha we can leave these blank here if we'd like. We can leave all of them blank here. And look, it does the same thing, right? Because we already have a variable up here. We don't need to declare another one in here. If we happen to have a variable that's going to be used as a count. Now, what we could do here, we could also get rid of this portion here. Maybe we want to treat it x equals uh, x is a uh, plus equal to three. Well, look, this will still run here because we can leave these blank. We can leave these two blank as well. In fact, we can leave all three of them blank here. Now, look, that works. But the problem is, let's say we got rid of this semicolon here and then this one here. Well, it's going to have a problem. We'll get a compiler error. Well, because that's because the for loop always, always needs these two semicolons here. Because there, that's that's how it's going to be reading things. It just takes two two semicolons and there's three spaces here. And uh, we could, in fact, we can leave all this one blank. Let's leave this one blank here. It's still going to need two semicolons here. Now this is just an infinite loop. It's going to be counting by threes. See, well, we can't tell that it's counting by three. Actually, can if we look at three. 6, 9, then it goes to the 2, then it counts by 3, 5, because it's always going to, alright. But this is basically an infinite loop. Last time here, when we made our while loop here, if I like, said something, see out, so say I said something, now right here, it's going to complain here. It'll still tell me there's some errors here because the while loop requires a true or a false of some sort. It requires some kind. It, it needs to have some kind of value to take in. Well, with the for loop here, we don't need that here. It's just going to be considered true if it's left empty. But so let's go back and use it here. We can let's say we got rid of this portion here. and we put it back here. Well, it's still going to execute. Now, we, if we, put, we can put on our boolean statement back here. We can also use the break statement here. So if x is greater than 50, break.
and it breaks on out of its own. Okay, so we can put our Boolean statement up here while x is greater than 50. Oh no, let me show, let me go back here. Notice this code is not equivalent here. Look, look at this here. This goes to 51 here. See how when it got to 48? Was x greater than 48? No. So it goes to here again. X is greater than 48 goes to 51 here. Because this is false here. X is 48. Now it's going to be 51 here. Then it's going to output here. So it breaks at the end here. Because remember, this portion here is adding this at the very end of the code here. When we get through our, through our first loop, it'll add it then. So first, let's say X is 48 here. It prints out 48 to the screen. Is X greater than 48? That's false, so we skip this. Now X equals 51 here. We run through here. Well, this is true, so we're going to execute it again. So this will just run it through an extra loop here. So if we had an array here and we used something like this, this could be dangerous that you only, we might not consider. We might try to uh, access it, some memory that does not exist. X and uh, or it's not reserved for the uh, arrays, which it could be bad. But if we just uh, if we got rid of this here and we put the uh, x is less than 50 here, and we run it again, it'll just go to the 48 this time. But it does the same thing here. And uh, if we don't have a variable initialized here, we can put the int x is equal to zero here and this is the file for loop here and since we only have one program statement we really don't need these these braces here and I just want to show you that it still runs here because it's only going to look at the f it's only going to execute the first program statement it sees and nothing else after that do a for loop here if we only have the run program statement but most of the time you're, you're going to be using braces but I, I still want to show you that now, just to wrap this tutorial up here, I'm going to show you the last thing here. Later on, let's say I wanted to make x equal 7. We want to output x to the screen. Well, if I try to run this here, there will be a compiler error. It says that the compiler error says that the x is undeclared here. Well, we declare it right here. Well, uh, this brings up a new problem here. We had, we're going to talk about scope. And it's not really a problem. It can actually help us, too. But I'm going to... Uh, it, it brings up a new... It, this is going to bring up a new topic here. And we'll be talking about scope uh, shortly here. So this is it on the while, on the for loop here. And uh, so uh, throughout the tutorials, we, we will be using applications on the for loop and hopefully you'll have a better understanding of it and it's uh, very useful I use the for loop more than I use the while loop in most cases so that wraps this up and I'll go over more well I don't know what I'll be going over next I'll probably go back over arrays